Welcome to the Coin Bureau Weekly Crypto Review. Here are this week's top headlines in the crypto news. Binance gets hit by the book. Regulators in over half a dozen countries declare the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange unwelcome. What impact this could have on crypto traders and the market? Meanwhile, Coinbase capitalizes on the Binance news. Coins and tokens are listing left and right while the exchange moves deeper into DeFi. Where is Coinbase headed next? The Mexican billionaire who's bullish on Bitcoin. Ricardo Salinas is trying to get his bank to accept Bitcoin. Will he succeed? And if so, what could it mean for Bitcoin? Bitcoin Banking Bonanza, a freshly penned NYDIG partnership, makes it possible for over 24 million Americans to buy and sell Bitcoin through their banks. Why this is just the beginning. Robinhood gets wrecked. FINRA slaps the ironically named investment app with a $70 million fine as it prepares to IPO. Wait until you hear what else the regulators have found. NFT tweets. Twitter airdrops 140 NFTs to users, while Bitcoin maxi Jack Dorsey dismisses Ethereum. A closer look at a critical metric that suggests the flippening could be around the corner. USDC supremacy. Circle partners with Crypto.com for global dollar payments as it begins to deploy on 10 additional blockchains. What is Circle's endgame? Crypto market madness. Altcoins rise up as the bull market begins to return. A surprising list of winners in this week's crypto market forecast. All this and more in just a moment. Good morning, afternoon or evening. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Guy and what you're about to see is educational content, not financial advice. You can find any topics you're looking for using the timestamps in the video timeline. And now for today's top stories. Countries are continuing their crackdown on Binance's global operations. Japan, Canada, Germany, the United States and the United Kingdom have all issued warnings since the start of the year. And now Thailand and the Cayman Islands are joining in the fun. If you're wondering why, the answer is obviously regulation. As I mentioned in last week's crypto review, even though Binance's country-specific deployments follow the rules and regulations of their respective regions, Binance's global operations do not. Besides the concerns around non-KYC accounts, Binance's global exchange also offers derivatives trading, including crypto futures and synthetic stocks. The real question is, why now? And the answer seems to be competition. Binance is the largest cryptocurrency exchange by far, and its offering of stocks and derivatives trading puts it in direct competition with other popular apps such as Robinhood and, of course, Coinbase. I reckon Binance's rivals are doing everything in their power to incite reactions from regulators around the world. Binance's response to these regulators has been pretty lackluster so far, but it's something that CEO Changpeng Zhao has seen coming from miles away. CZ's take is that decentralized exchanges will replace centralized exchanges anyway, and even though that may be true, there is still quite a bit of time before DEXs are ready for centralized trading volumes. I suspect we're going to see Binance set up offices in specific regions in the coming months to appease regulators. In any event, I suggest setting up an account with another cryptocurrency exchange as backup just in case. My recommendation is KuCoin because it offers a similarly high degree of altcoin support as Binance. I'll leave a link to my KuCoin tutorial in the video description if you're interested. I'll also keep you posted on any other exchange crackdown updates on my socials until these situations settle down. And the link to my socials is in the video description as well. In the meantime, Coinbase is making the most of Binance's regulatory woes by opening the door to new assets and services. In a blog post, Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong explained that the exchange will be fast-tracking its listing process, adding exchange support for more countries and regions, and building a, quote, crypto app store. To increase exchange listings, Coinbase will be reducing the amount of legal questions a crypto project has to answer from 70 to 12. It will also create an experimental zone for new cryptocurrencies considered to be risky and add support for more cryptocurrencies in the Coinbase wallet, even if they're not able to list that coin or token on the exchange. 
This is perhaps the most significant point, as it means that it will be easy for Coinbase to list any cryptos that are not compliant under today's archaic standards, but could be in a few years' time. To increase its global reach, Coinbase will shift its focus from North America and Europe to other continents and countries around the world. To build its crypto app store, Coinbase will make it possible to access popular decentralized applications directly from the Coinbase app, which could be rocket fuel for Ethereum, Cardano, Polkadot, Solana, and other smart contract cryptocurrencies. More importantly, Coinbase says it will do all of this while allowing users to maintain full custody of their crypto, meaning Coinbase itself never touches your coins or tokens. This is amazing news for retail traders, but the average institutional investor wants to have professional custody, preferably through their existing bank. This is where that Mexican billionaire comes in. If you watched my video about Bitcoin adoption in Latin America, you'll recall that Ricardo Salinas is a longtime Bitcoin bull with a distaste for Dogecoin fanboys. In that video, I also mentioned that Ricardo wants his bank to be the first in Mexico to accept Bitcoin, and that idea isn't sitting too well with Mexican regulators. This is primarily because there are no comprehensive regulations about cryptocurrency in the country. They are neither currencies nor assets, which is bizarre to say the least. While a Mexican lawmaker has proposed a bill to increase the regulatory clarity around cryptocurrencies, we have yet to see anything materialize from his efforts. Now, I suspect this has to do with the lack of education around cryptocurrencies in the upper echelons of governments around the world. For example, a US politician recently said that the government needs to have the power to reverse cryptocurrency transactions on every blockchain. This is as funny as it is sad, and I suspect there is a similar degree of disconnect present among Mexican officials. This means it's unlikely that Ricardo will get his wish anytime soon, but I have a feeling that he's going to try meeting them in the middle with a crypto custodian solution to get his bank in on Bitcoin. After all, it's working north of the border. New York Digital Investment Group has partnered with payments firm National Cash Register to bring Bitcoin trading to over 650 banks across the United States. The 24 million customers of these banks will not be able to deposit or withdraw any cryptocurrency they're trading, which conveniently sidesteps many of the confusing crypto regulations. Behind the scenes, all crypto trades will be settled by NYDIG via OTC. NYDIG will also custody all the cryptocurrencies being bought and sold by bank clientele. Now, you might be wondering, crypto is kryptonite to the banks, so why are they on board with this? Well, NYDIG's president explained that American banks couldn't help but notice that billions of dollars have been moving out of their coffers and into Coinbase and other crypto exchanges over the last year. Given that you can earn higher annual percentage yields on dollars from centralized stablecoin staking solutions than dollars in a bank, I'm really not all that surprised. Anyways, what makes this partnership so significant is that NCR owns almost 50% of the point-of-sale payments infrastructure in the US and over 800,000 ATMs. According to Forbes, NCR is planning on expanding its crypto offerings to other industries outside of banking. If they roll this out to all their existing infrastructure, 50% of merchants in the United States and almost every ATM in the country will allow you to transact in crypto. NCR's move into crypto also means it might start to take some market share from popular crypto trading apps, including Robinhood. Robinhood has been slapped with a $70 million fine by the US Financial Industry Regulation Authority. This is the highest fine ever for the offenses in question, which include a failure to properly display account data, providing false and misleading information, allowing unauthorized users to trade options, and going offline during times of high market volatility. What's interesting is that this fine does not reference the most recent Robinhood outages, which saw thousands of traders banned from buying a stock which was being shorted by an affiliated hedge fund. FINRA also seems to have overlooked another concerning piece of information in Robinhood's recent IPO documentation. As reported by Zero Hedge, Robinhood paid its chief legal officer $4.5 million in 2020 and gave him $25 million of stock as well. He'd only begun working for Robinhood in May that year. 
Oddly enough, Robin Hood's chief legal officer is the former head of the SEC, and this has begun raising eyebrows as to what could have justified such a massive compensation for only seven months of work. Robin Hood's IPO documentation also revealed that it holds over $11.6 billion in cryptocurrency, and that more than a third of its cryptocurrency trading revenue is coming from Dogecoin. To put things into context, this means that Dogecoin trading alone could account for as much as 10% of Robinhood's annual profits. I imagine this is why Robinhood has designated the anonymous Dogecoin whale as one of its largest risks, because any significant selling from that account could crash the price of Doge. If you're wondering when you'll be able to short Robinhood stock, Decrypt estimates this will be in August or September. If you want to learn more about the Robinhood saga and how you can trade stocks in a trustless manner, watch my video about that using the link up there in the top right. On the topic of unpopular apps, Twitter airdropped 140 NFTs last week. It was actually 20 copies of seven NFTs, if we're being precise. These 140 NFTs were minted on Rarible, and they were given to the lucky users chosen by whoever operates Twitter's official account. Now, I couldn't help but notice that the users being selected are the ones who praised Twitter the most, but maybe I'm just salty because I didn't get one. It would have been an easy buck given that Twitters are now selling for tens of thousands of dollars a pop. What's odd is that even though Twitter's NFTs were minted on Ethereum, Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey still refuses to buy into ETH. This is because Jack believes that BTC is the only internet currency the world needs, and that all features and functions found on Ethereum can be added to Bitcoin. Now, he's actually not wrong, and there are many crypto projects that are aiming to do just that. One of them is called Stacks, and you can learn more about it using the link in the video description. Now, even though Bitcoin can technically host decentralized applications, the network effect in this niche remains on Ethereum, and it continues to increase by the day. Case in point, Ethereum's daily active wallet addresses surpassed Bitcoin's daily active wallet addresses for the first time last week. I'm sure that millions of Bitcoin maxis cried out in pain during that moment, perhaps even Jack Dorsey himself. This is because this metric is arguably the beginning of the flippening, the point at which an altcoin becomes larger than Bitcoin. Many believe that it's only a matter of time before Ethereum flips Bitcoin, including me. If you want to know why, you can watch my recent video about Ethereum. It's up there in the top right. Besides Ethereum, the other cryptocurrency that's been in the spotlight recently is USDC. Now, in case you didn't know, USDC is the second largest stablecoin by market cap, and it's actually been growing faster than USDT, so much so that Masari now predicts USDC will flippen USDT on Ethereum. USDC's success is due to Circle, its issuing company. Circle is closely regulated to ensure sufficient USD reserves for all circulating tokens, unlike other stablecoin issuers. Circle has also secured some serious partnerships since the start of the year. The most recent of these is Circle's partnership with Crypto.com, which makes it possible for users in 30 countries to purchase USDC using dollars directly from their bank accounts. Circle has also been pushing to deploy USDC on other blockchains besides Ethereum. As reported by Coindesk, we will soon see USDC on Avalanche, Celo, Flow, Hedera Hashgraph, Carver, Nervous Network, Polkadot, Stacks, and Tezos. Circle's endgame here is pretty clear, and that's to overtake Tether as the largest stablecoin by market cap by making USDC readily accessible to every smart contract cryptocurrencies ecosystem. One convenient consequence of this is that we'll likely increase investor confidence in the crypto market, as there won't be any more FUD flying around about Tether. Now, I happen to have a video all about that topic as well, and you already know where you can find it. Yep, in the description. Turning to the crypto markets, we can see that Bitcoin is continuing to follow the Wyckoff accumulation price pattern. As reported by Cointelegraph, this price pattern suggests another six weeks of semi-sideways action before we move back to the upside. I reckon that corresponds quite nicely to all the bullish updates and developments coming down the pipe for altcoins, and it seems the pump has already begun for some of them. This week's winners are TitanSwap, Zinfin Network, Compound, The Internet Computer, and Aave. 
Though I've heard of TitanSwap before, I must admit that I'm not all that familiar with the project. As far as I can tell, it's a DEX on Ethereum and the Binance Smart Chain that also acts as a bridge between both blockchains. Titan's price pump seems to have come from its recent integration with the Binance Smart Chain. It's worth pointing out that the majority of Titan's trading volume is happening on the Hobi exchange, and the token has very limited exchange support. Its price history also looks a bit interesting, to say the least, so be cautious if you hold or plan on holding this crypto. Zinfin is a crypto project that made the weekly winners list not long ago, and it's also one that I'm quite frankly not very keen on. This is mainly because Zinfin is an enterprise-oriented blockchain rather than a true cryptocurrency blockchain geared towards regular folks like you and me. Its XTC's token seems to have caught a second wind from the integration with MyWish.io, which allows you to create cryptocurrency tokens on various smart contract blockchains without having to write a single line of code. XDC seems to have hit a key level of resistance around the 11 cent mark, but it seems to have enough momentum to retest its all-time high of 14 cents in the coming days. Just be aware that XDC's exchange support is also quite limited, and the massive changes in its daily trading volume suggest that whales are at play. Compound is a crypto project I haven't talked about for quite some time, and it seems its comp token is pumping in response to the release of the Compound Treasury, a DeFi savings protocol geared towards institutions. For those unfamiliar, Compound Finance is one of the largest lending and borrowing protocols in Ethereum, and I believe it was also the first to invent the supply-demand-driven interest rates which power lending and borrowing pools. Compound Finance became famous because of its issue of the comp token to its users, which at one point was so generous that users were literally being paid to borrow money in the protocol. Comp is in a very strong uptrend and headed straight for its previous support level of $500. It's possible it will be there by the time this video hits the tube. I'll leave a link to an article in the description if you want to learn more about Compound's comp token shenanigans. Next up on the list is the Internet Computer, whose ICP token seems to be climbing because the Definity Foundation has finally stopped selling its ICP tokens. This is what's explained in a recent Cointelegraph article, which details the sale of over $6 billion worth of ICP by the Definity Foundation since the token began trading on the open market. I must admit that it's not something I expected from a project as powerful as the Internet Computer, but it confirms my suspicions that it's not everything it was cracked up to be. ICP's price action speaks for itself. You can learn more about the internet computer by watching my video about it. It's up there in the top right if you forgot. Now, our last weekly winner is Aave, which is rallying in response to its protocol's partnership with Fireblocks and Galaxy Digital to bring DeFi to institutional investors. Aave is the largest lending and borrowing protocol on Ethereum, and it's also the largest DeFi protocol by total value locked on any cryptocurrency blockchain. Whereas Compound is famous for its comp yield farming, Aave is famous for its flash loan feature, which lets you borrow all the money in its protocol for one Ethereum block. As I've mentioned before, Aave is one of the few cryptocurrency projects which is hyper aware of how important risk management is to institutions. And I reckon that's why it's had so much success in that realm as of late. Aave seems to be headed back for the $300 range, which is where I expect it'll see some significant resistance, possibly even a rejection if Bitcoin sees a downturn around that time. The good news is that Aave is still 3x below its all-time high, which I could see easily being surpassed by the end of this bull market. I'll leave a few links to information about Aave in the video description if you want to learn more about this crazy crypto project. Well, that's all for today's Coin Bureau Weekly Crypto Review. If you enjoyed it, you know what to do. Hit that like button, subscribe button, and bell icon too. If you want more of me, head on over to Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram to get a sneak peek behind the scenes. If you join my Telegram channel, you'll get the daily crypto updates you crave, and signing up for my weekly newsletter is a great way to get the tools, tips, and tricks you need to get paid. And of course, you can support the channel by heading over to the Coin Bureau merch store and picking up a shirt or hoodie or both. Links to all these resources are in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in next week's episode.